you can charge your phone and listen to the radio, which I don't listen to the radio except if I'm in my freaking car. But when I'm listening to the radio in the car, I'm listening to music. I'm not listening to news. So you can get it from Sharper Image. They'll give you coupons when you get it. And you can plug in your phone and, you know, you also can use, um, uh, what do you call it, like a like a, a flashlight thing or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know, heck if I remember. So, so anyway, so I, you know, I was, I was like, oh, let me just get it anyway, just in case. Emergency, never know, you know. So how's everyone being and doing when it comes to, you know, your quarantine? She's so annoying when she's ready. When, I, when I'm ready to quit, when I'm ready to talk and everything, she should get all moody and miserable and all kind of fart. You see? And, and, and I asked her, I said, do you want to come and do a little bit? Nah, I'm not, in, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. But then she had bottom me now. Okay. So you got to see what it's like when, when I deal um when I deal with them. Okay. Hey, Keandra. Maybe you should get this to your son. <laughs> especially, especially when you have a sitting there for like 10 days. That's <laughs> Keeping it dead ass real, okay? But if I one time, Damon was there talking and talking, he was just talking a lot of shit. So I just had it and I just sprayed it, just like when you had this, the, the fair with the, with the um clown. And they said when you spray into the clown mode and see who popped the balloon first. That's what I did. That shit was hilarious, okay? Hilarious as fuck. That's what keeps me looking nice and young and fresh. Turn that shit around yes, on your kids. That's right, that's right. It works like a charm. I've already passed the stage of belts behind a chair, using my fist. Uh, let me see, what else? Definitely don't put them in the corner. Okay. All right. Oh, I used to pinch them too. That's what Charlie's remember. I used to pinch them. I remember when I used to take all of them to go sit, to go in the bathroom at the same time. I said, go in the bathroom. Go in the bathroom. So everybody, because there's always not me. And not me. I am it. Not me. You know, so, but anyway, you know, when it comes to our children and going through this ascension process, whoo, girl, that's an extra dooziness, okay? I mean, dealing with Brandon and his, his negative talking and bullshit, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so fucking annoying, you know? And, and, and you're hearing some of that pessimistic talk, but just remember that there's a lot of humbling coming with the, the masculine energy. I can tell you that for sure, for sure, you know? Oh my God. He says your mom would love her because she says I'm annoying. <laughs> you talking about one of these? You can get it at your local beauty supply store. But unfortunately, beauty supply stores are now closed. I'm so glad that I, I follow my instinct and got some stuff that I needed. Jump on it, you know what I'm saying? Yep. I tell you, I yesterday, I swear it was yesterday when I woke up, I said, oh my gosh, it feels like a, it really feels, it really, really felt apocalyptic. It really felt apocalyptic because um, it, 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 it reminded me of um, the Terminator movie when after the um what was that thing called again no man it was you know when the holo like a holocaust type thing and and then it was just so quiet like quiet and i i felt it felt so so surreal you know and it really felt like in a movie so it's like when i'm driving on the road hardly any cars on the road it's like ghost town it's like really really like ghost town um, almost waiting for the the zombies to come out the ground or something, but you know I'm just you know sometimes when you watch too many freaking movies, you know, you never know. Well, but but I still remember them though, you know, The Walking Dead and all that stuff. I was never attracted to those movies because it just That's kind of puts you into no, it was a movie too. It Walking puts you Dead into um, I would have it puts you into a conscious a consciousness of feeling um, you know, like as if you feel like as if it's really gonna happen. So, um, and I, and when I thought and I, I said, okay, spirit, what, what, what does this really, what does this really mean? And, and, and they, they, you know, they just keep telling me how we're in, in that timeline, just like what it was like during Atlantis and Lemuria, 
when everything just started crumbling, falling apart, when the, when the masculine turned away from his feminine counterpart. And, um, you know, I, I feel like as if most of us went past that stage already of feeling that separation. But now it's like most of the, the feminine or the divine feminine should have been feeling like you are taking back that extra power within yourself. And like, doesn't matter what anybody does or says, but you're not choosing to accept how you're treated. And they just have to become more humble. And a lot of things that I said, that I have prophesied, that I predicted has happened and continues to happen. So I just see all this humble mm -hmm. kindness going on all around me mm -hmm. a lot of humble pie and and i'm not afraid to say i told you so i said that i told you so i told you so and and that's why we stay on course with what we know to be true and um and really too it, it just signifies again honoring honoring the divine feminine and honoring your path and honoring the divine and knowing that the divine is where we're being taken to connect, you know, to keep, to keep reconnecting to source and reconnecting to source and that no one can say that is the boogie monster anymore. And, you know, some people still want to still continue with the conspiracy things and it's very easy to get mm -hmm. caught up in it, but you know what? Me not get catch up in them things then. Okay. And the more that anyone's resisting is the more it's going to persist. That's what Neil Donald Wall said it. Yeah, man. The more you resist is the more it persists and that, you know, it, it's like, it reminds me every, um, Easter, I used to watch the 10 commandments and I remember that part every time it's that, that that's the highlight, you know, cause we part that red, our red seas, cause it really wasn't a red sea. We part our red seas. And this was the time when I think Moses did the last dance, because even though when the people wanted to reach the promised land which the promised land is really within you where you're taking yourself to the new kingdom the new earth the new kingdom the queendom and all the disbelievers and all the ones that still were mocking and making fun of you and saying no don't believe in the twin soul don't believe in that no that's not your path don't go over here and you stay on your path steady 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 slow you know the turtle might move slow but that turtle is still getting through that race you know so steady and slow wins the race you know you don't have to rush you just watch and be just keep being observant keep being observant and 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 try not to be reacting you know or reactive you know unless you have to tell your picnic about them bumbo you know like myself and kiki have had to and brandon you know pain yeah, in the asses oh. and, and still some humility has had to come with this you know that's all i keep seeing is humility humi a lot of humble humbleness and humbleness and it's not about saying all oh, right wrong is just knowing how things have to have to come into balance within yourself and how much mm -hmm. you have been attaining your own masculine and feminine power and bringing it into that equal space and and as you align with it then your children your your <laughs> your spouses or whoever <laughs> that's <weird. laughs> has to align automatically with you because it's an energy it's an energy and so, you know, when I think of that timeline of everything that was uh, just being destructive and falling apart and all of that, and I remember myself and saying, well, you know what? I know what the truth is. I'm still going to keep connecting to uh, myself, my own inner freedom, that even if it means that I'm going to be separated from my beloved in the meantime, until they find themselves again, then so be it. And this is where you stay again on course. I know you wonder why you want to say that because you never know when a bug might come. Mommy, I'm going to say why. You don't spray me no more. So what? I might as well be keep spraying me so much. What? Bye. She's saying bye. Oh, can I give you a hug? Okay, go ahead. You're going to spray me. Go, go ahead. I'm don't talking. Don't point it at me. Mm -hmm. Do I, don't. <laughs> okay. Bye. Don't say bye, say see you later. <laughs> so anyway, so that's what it was like. That it was that's what it was like back then in how uh, we you know turned away from each other because we had to follow our hearts and follow where we were being led to that even if it meant that we were going to be separating from who we love that we had to surrender to that too as well 
and imagine that it has been all these centuries of separation and um, the divine feminine had disempowered herself you know and it was still again a part of the the, the, the equation this is what we uh, we were going to come back to ourselves by going through this process and um, it's like the earth it's just truly taking back her children her power um, the animals that have been slaughtered and, and, and stuff like that it's like uh, people might find themselves just falling off the mountain I'm, I'm so serious it's like everything and so you know they'll talk about all everything that's being destroyed um, but don't look at it as sad or being sad it's just the law of the West it's the law I remember that the cartoon you know when I don't know if any of you love cartoons like I do. The, 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 the ones from the, the, uh, the 70s and the 80s. And this was a droopy dog episode. And and I just love laughing. And I remember when the wolf was looking at the mountain. And he said, he said you know, I'm the one that makes the laws around here. And, and I'm not making fun of you, Kiki. And he said, you see the fly over yonder? Yeah, I'm going to shoot that fly. And he shot the fly, and then the fly was on top of the mountain. And he went, yeah, and it was dead. It was gone. And he was just like so, such a cool dude, that wolf, you know. And I always keep trying to find that episode just so I can get a good laugh. I think about Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry is one of my favorite cartoons. You know, Tom is constantly chasing Jerry, and no matter how much Jerry dupes him, and he's still trying to outsmart Jerry, and he still can't, you know, still can't beat him. And isn't that what we've been doing is we've been chasing each other mm -hmm. back and forth and forth and back all the schemes all the different experiences all the different outcomes all the different circumstances you know and they say the cat chased the mouse the mouse chased the cat the dog chased the cat you know and I, and I think about the farmer in the Dell the farmer in the Dell so you know all these things you hear me talking about it's all in the book it's all in the book and the cheese stands alone so no matter where we had to be from the farmer to the wife and the wife to the children and and you know whether it's the brother and the sister and the brother and the sister to the dog and the cat and the cat to the mouse and the mouse to the cheese the cheese stands alone the cheese stands alone the cheese stands alone I of the Jericho the cheese stands alone the farmer in the dell the farmer in the dell I of the Jericho the farmer in the dell and so I, when I refer to that song and how we deal with you know our inner child and the inner child joy and um you know when I, I think about the baby that comes into the world and they came into the world alone even if it's a set of twins they still came into the world alone and they had to remember themselves and and you know i always think about babies when they come in uh they're crying because they didn't want to come and they're back into that heavy body again, you know, that heaviness of life. And they and they really feel the burden. The, the soul starts to feel the burden of being here. And then it has to take time for it to, to for it to remember itself and why it chose to came here and, and all of that. <clears throat> and so as what's interesting is how you, you, you remember, you incarnate, you forget, and then you got to remember again. So it's like you're going from the light you're coming from the light and then you're going into the heaviness the darkness you descend you know i walk through the valley of the shadow of death you descend in consciousness you descend into your mother's womb and you come out come out through somewhere again and then as you come out again and you're heavy in body light in consciousness you merge both together and this is how you get to uh, you know, I say that how you win the race, how you get to the to that part of yourself and who you are becoming, and 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 that constant recycle, and doing it alone, just like the cheese, and then you start that cycle again. So you know, give yourself a pat on the back, give yourself a pat on the back for everything from what you uh, experience and go through, and you laugh through it and smile through it and cry through it you get angry through it and all the you know that goody goody stuff so you know i like i said i realize how much more of a humility is occurring with the masculine because 
uh, there's so much lockdowns that are happening around, even though they have a cure from what I heard, there's a cure or something that is in place already. I feel that's had been healing, um, for some people who have been infected and it's like the structures, the money relationships that so was being shown, there's going to be separation, more separation, financial losses, panicking. Um, and it, it, it just feels like that part of that masculine, um, energy, whether it's within you or outside of you, your physical divine masculine, where the fear is, um, letting go, letting go of <clears throat> what they have been able to be in control and be thankful that the ones that you are connected to, that they, um, agreed to embody the energy that we were going to bring from the unconscious and make it conscious so that way we can break it down and <clears throat> transmute through it and turn that heaviness that led into gold you see and and so i i really could feel like because it's like i just like went outside or when i wake up i just felt that collective energy and when i say collective energy i'm talking like it it, it goes in fields and and it's in pockets of energy and it's like I could feel um, like a dismay, like, what am I going to do? What's going to happen? Um, it's beyond, you know, one's control. And everything that had been placed in blame, like, oh, it's this one's fault and that one's fault and it's China's fault and it's the government's fault and this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. But in the meantime, though, there's a part of each person that knows if I try to go against what's not best for me right now, it's gonna backfire because of what we've had control over. But now this is something so major that it's out of your hands and it's out of your control. That's where that patriarch has been. Everything that has been controlled, everything that has been told what it must be instead of who we can be and how we can now truly manifest from our heart, you see? And it's gonna feel strange and it's gonna feel like, you know, what I hear spirits say, like the baby that just uh, came out of the mother's womb. We came out, we're, we're, it's like mother is giving rebirth to us again. This is another cycle of this rebirth. And then you see yourself again. It's like, it's like this is really feeling yourself again as this child that's just emerged out of the world again. And it's a new world it's a new timeline and it's like you're waiting to feel that nurturing to come from your mother so you can feel safe again but now what where do i go from here where do i start and it's like some of us is just waiting to see what comes next like how many of you are just observing like just observing like how many of you are just at that place where you're so at peace that you're just observing and that's all where you're at you're not panicking. You, um, you're just in acceptance and you're just feeling that newness, that vibration of newness, even though it may not have completed itself or it, it, it's not, you know, manifested as yet, but you know that it's there, you know that it's happening. Well, that's exactly where some of us is at, where some of us are heading to, you know? And, and stuff like that. And it's um, it's strange and it's new, just like the baby that's born. They're like, oh my God, I'm here again. And they're crying and then all they wanna do is just feel the warmth of their mother's bosom, you know, or hearing their father's voice. And, and that's the only thing that's close, close enough to them for them to feel um, safe, you know, um, in, in amongst all of the chitter chatter and all the chaos, you know. That's why when babies are around too much people and when they hear all these noises, they jump, you know, it's like, it's frightening because they're in a new energetic space from where they came from. And then part of them remembers the light and the love, the pure love. And then the other part of them is having to get used to all of this density. And so part of you is leaving the patterns and what you've been connected to with the density at the same time you're feeling the newness and that 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 rebirth of yourself which is lighter so it's 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 not fighting against it but it's more like it's like oh i'm letting this part go but okay a part of this is with me 
oh, I can feel in, in this, but then this is what it looks like here too. You know, this is how it's moving. Like, it's just like, um, and it feels very uh, mystical. It feels very, very mystical. That's, that's, that's all I know. Um, and, you know, because even though they said, um, at least for New York, because that's where I'm at, they said that restaurants can be open and as long as you order out, but it's a lot of them are closed. Like everything, when I say everything, just about closed. Everything that by eight o'clock, you're gonna go groceries, you better go get this and do that. Um, oh, there's more water in the grocery store because all that panicking shit. You know, there's water there. There's water there and, um, you know, people still grabbing up some other stuff and, and things like that. And I said, you see, what was all of that all about? Like, it doesn't make any sense. And even though I have gone shopping maybe like, oh my gosh, like four or five times already, not because I'm stocking up, but because four of us in the house, like dealing with boys that eat a lot. But it's just the mere fact that um, everything is just moving in a cycle for me. And I know, and what I said before everything started and while it started, I said, I know that I am provided for. I know that whatever I need, even if it's the last one left, which that happened to me, was the last water left and it was waiting there for me. Okay. The last set of cups was waiting there for me. It was there for me. The last this, the last that, because my consciousness is in gratitude for what I have ahead of time and I know that it's there, you know? And that's where I stay always, you know? Even before, when, when you reach to the next level of this consciousness, like even before you know what you need, it's already there waiting for you. And by the time you say, oh, how did you know that I needed that spirit? They know, you know, your, your higher self just knows. Everything that's in that higher energy just knows, you know? So <clears throat> I know that that is where um, most of us may be at this this waiting and it's like looking around the corner, around the bend and you can't see what's ahead but you know that something is happening. You know that something's coming, you know something wonderful is coming. It may even be like they, they keep telling me, you say when I say they, it's like the team, they're like, Everything just feels like a thief in the night. Like it just like feels like an element of surprise. And you're you're gonna feel that greater joy within yourself that others may not be able to understand. They won't be able to understand that type of joy because there are some people that are also upset because they're expecting some people to be more upset, but you're not, and you're not triggered and you're not in fear, but they want you to be in fear. So it's still that testing within yourself to um, to see, am I going to respond the same way I did back during the time of Atlantis and every time when something happened or if I felt like I was at a loss for something or I was separated from my family, um, that I know that everything is still coming together even though it looks like it's falling apart. And it th that that's how you're, you're, you're sort of retesting yourself with what's happening now. And it feels very mysterious also. Um, and it's okay for it to be mysterious because there's just some things that the divine is just not going to show. They're just like, there's no um, blueprint for it. Because if there was a blueprint for it, I kind of feel like um, it would kind of take on an element of the past and how things was. So that's why it's going to keep feeling like a free energy. It's going to keep feeling loose. Greetings. Jordan, now I know who you are. <laughs> Change your name. And um, and, and it's going to feel um, like you're walking on air. That's really what it feels like. Like you're walking on air and you don't know where your feet is going to land. You see? And that is what is also happening with the divine masculine because they're used to having everything, you know, because masculine is like that space of what I can store, what I have, um, and the linear thought of what is expected that you, you have it in place, that everything is set, that it's planned. Feminine energy is I'm free and I am also creating from nothing. I'm creating from the void. I'm creating from the unexpected. So great Uranus is bringing all this unexpected energy, unexpected thoughts. It's transiting with so much of this um, 
uh, surprise element also because Uranus I know from what I hear is like that's like that element of surprise and mystery um, and then Saturn now comes in as what we call the the, the uh, what they call it that's really what Satan Saturn Satan Saturnalia um, the delight in the mystery and the darkness um, and it holds its light even though you may not be able to see it because it's hidden but you can feel it and you know because you're connecting it's not so awesome that's how I'm hearing it you know that's how it's coming in it's like everything is coming in mostly planetary planetary and um, what a what a great celebration it is um, that is moving for you know it's like I can't even keep up with the dates like I'm like oh what's today's date oh my goodness okay so this is 21st so or is it the 20 okay it's the 21st because <laughs> I even had the dates mixed up in the other video and I was like oh my goodness it was actually March 10th instead of the 11th but you know what it's 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 just everything's just merging and crunching in so much that um it's like literally having to see through the things that you think you can't see and you're allowing yourself to remember that gift of being able to see it like i said in between all of the um the other parts of yourself or everything outside of yourself that's so hard and rigid and cold and icy and fearful and doubtful and you know and you could feel the difference when you keep feeling that joy through the density and the darkness and the heaviness you know so you know um i even like like how they show it to me like in a visual is almost like you close your eyes and right now where I am, it's nighttime. And in the nighttime, you know, the stars are out there. And sometimes you feel like you got to look really hard to see the stars. And there's meteors and there's um, kryptonites and all these different elements are all around. And some of the stuff you may not be able to see and some of the stuff you will be able to see. So as you're tapping into more of your inner knowing and that feminine energy, which is where the, the divine masculine is being pushed to have to do that. It's like uh, they're, 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 there's this push to research, to connect, to not be distracted, right? Distracted by the outer world and um, anything that takes you away from yourself, you know, um, and be like a robot. So, <clears throat> and um, for most of us, everything else is just taken away in order to find it back, you know, it's the best way I can describe it. And you think of like the baby, you know, like we are the newborn babies now that are rediscovering ourselves. And we're rediscovering ourselves, not knowing where we're gonna go, but just staying in delight of it and joy. Cause I think about children when they're getting ready to embark on creeping, walking, crawling, uh, rediscovering to eat again, with, you know, with the gums, you know, they're adapting to eating with the gums. And then when they get the teeth and all that stuff coming in and <clears throat> they're not thinking about um you know any danger or if i choke or if i fall and all these things they just keep it rolling and they just keep mastering themselves um through all the elements and that's that's where we're that's where we are that's where we are and um and i and i really feel that we're at that stage where that rebuilding is beginning now so it's so important to focus on what are you rebuilding um that even if it may look impossible that it's not impossible and don't allow anybody else's frequency and thoughts to shift you from what you are creating or recreating that even if what you're recreating you never thought about it before but now you're thinking about it even if whatever happens next week or the next two weeks and uh, you know they say oh but there's a ban on this and I can't do that don't let that stop you because again this is the time to uh, feel yourself in this new energy and and don't wait for it to coincide with someone else's before you take those steps you know because you're becoming more creative through your consciousness more than if you physically went and did it and this is where the divine masculine is being taken to also tap into their intuition to their feelings to their heart 
and it's like a battle and I tell you the strangest thing happened to me today I mean it wasn't strange I mean I, I, I guess what what can I say this was where I was listening back to that dream that I had on March 10 and all of a sudden I felt my heart getting tight again I was like why is my heart getting so tight again and I was like oh it makes sense because it has to do with that part of us with that masculine energy that um, is desiring to merge with the divine feminine and it's like taking steps towards each other and balance out each other with this sacred alchemy and again it's like breaking through the blocks like like I think of cinder blocks I think of everything that's in in a solid state and what it takes to penetrate through it and feel the merge within yourself because it's like your physical body is so heavy and it's so dense and then your spirit is merging closer within you and as it's as it's merging within you it's breaking through the blockages so that's why when they, you think of someone that has heart murmurs heart palpitations heart disease and all that stuff it's all because of whatever they've held on to so tightly and um and being able to allow and allow the love to flow you know it's like i woke up this morning i'm uh, gonna say this morning let me be real with you it was this afternoon and i just kept hearing that love music um i'm gonna find it for you and not just say it because i i felt so good inside and you you guys have heard me play so so often but it's just one of those type of music that when you hear certain music it just brings you right back to your heart like really really quickly that's that's what i'm talking about and it's the one that says here i go here i go here i go la 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 and and i just i was just dancing and floating and cleaning the bathroom and you know it didn't even matter what was going on around me i didn't have nothing to eat yet nothing to drink and i heard it in my head and i said i'm gonna play it i'm gonna play it and i just kept hearing about how this love you may not feel like it or look like it but you still feel it because it's penetrating and it's penetrating and it's penetrating see and all this time you may have thought it wasn't there but it is there and as we keep letting go you're going to feel your heart chakra just opening and allow it to open you know you're going to feel your womb chakra opening up more so you'll be able to receive more you see and it's in that freer energy of receiving instead of that physical what am i physically doing what am i physically saying do you feel the love without me saying i love you yes i'm in the mood for love so tell me why this is the words about this weather my dear this little dream i fade away there i go talking out of my head again oh baby won't you come and put our two hearts together two hearts together that would make me strong and brave strong and great oh when we're one i'm not afraid i'm not afraid if there's a cloud up above us go on and let it rain i'm sure our love together will endure a hurricane oh my baby won't you let me love you and give a relief from this awful misery Understanding each other, see? Together, do it soon. My soul's on fire. Come on and take me. I'll be what you make me, my darling, my dear. Oh, baby, you make me feel so good. Let me take you by the hand. Come, let us visit our land in that new promised land. land. Promised land. You see that? Did I find that? Know that? I remember that. Absolutely not. That spirit. 
I am so tired of being without it. Never knowing what so life is about. Chase me, love. Love. man, and you can go now if, if you, you want, want to. to. Isn't that awesome? What an awesome message through this song from 1952. I always believe that music from the 50s and 60s, you know, my mom used to play, oh, we used to play music every weekend, you know, cleaning up the house, you know, that's how it was in the West Indian family then, you know, and music is just the language of my soul. That's all I know. It's always a message. There's always a message, you know. And so you can see that with that song, the Divine Masculine has been holding space. It may not look that way, but they've been holding space for the Divine Feminine to open her heart again and not be hardened with the heart. And I go back to Moses where he, uh, thank you, sweetie pie, Sophia, Goddess Sophia. And you know how uh, the heart was hardened by Pharaoh and the ego says, I choose for it to be this way. And he felt that if he was going to manipulate Moses to um, feel disempowered by placing that next curse, you know. And so that curse in and of itself backfired because it was the, 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 uh, the son of the pharaohs that ended up uh, getting, you know, I don't know if it was poisoned. I feel some of them were poisoned and... Uh, and you know, in my country, they call it goat malt says, I, I curse it, you, whatever. And, it, and it, the energy turned right back on you. And so we've placed the curses on ourselves, honestly, because of thoughts and what you speak and what you say over and over and over again. It's not external. Never has been. You see, I know the power of my tongue. Oh boy, do I know. You see, so as... He had heart in his heart, the Pharaoh. He had to relent finally and say that God is God. Source is source. The power of the Christ. It is, it is, it is, as it is, as above, so below. Because I'm pretty sure those were actually the words that were spoken, not the ones that they wanted, right? Because they really wanted to dim that light so much that they restructured all the scripture and took out the feminine principle and all that stuff. And look at that, huh? I hit the bust, you know. I hit a lot of things that I remembered in different places, but I'm so grateful that I came in with more memory. From I was three years young, I felt so strange and alienated, and I used to just keep talking to God, and money would fall out the sky. Money fell out the sky. It really did, just like $50, just whoosh, and I was like, thank you, and I didn't tell anyone. I just kept it rolling. I kept that little bank rolling for myself, and, you know, I was a little girl, and, um... And I was just rebellious. I used to throw myself down on that floor when I didn't want to go to no damn church. But I knew and I realized in hindsight as I got older that I was supposed to go there so I can gather up all the data. You know, you're gathering up data somewhere. And you're going to be going through the trenches. You're going to be going through the hell as they call it. I did a reading for a young lady about two hours ago, I was saying. And she reminded me of something that I totally wasn't thinking of anymore. And I did talk about it in the book and it had to do with that beginning stages or middle stages of your awakening. And um, there was so much fear, so much darkness that I had to face within myself because you know, I was always this happy person. And I'm not saying not to be happy, but I had to go and find the parts of myself that things were hidden that I didn't remember, you know? Cause you're not gonna remember everything cause if the soul was gonna remember everything, you just die and crash and burn, you know? And, <sighs> The house was shaking, okay? Seriously, the house was like the rooftop was like, it felt like, like that's what was happening, like really, really happening. And then in the closets, in the whole house where I was, all the closets, everything, it was like um, the exorcist or the, you know, some, it was like a weird zombie movie was going on around me. My heart was palpitating, but I wasn't, and I wasn't afraid, like sore afraid, but I was in fear. And... I just kept recording for the book and recording for the book and I stayed in the, in the office, I stayed there, I stayed behind the desk and everything was rumbling all around me so seriously. And my aunts were calling, oh, what are you doing? What's going on? Because I'm going through the same thing. The tears are just banging. There was all this banging on the roof, banging back. When I say loud, 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 I went through a lot of supernatural shit on my own. I saw spirits walking up and down all over the place and souls that were in pain. You 
know, ancestors, pregnant women, like crazy was coming through to me. I was chanting and I was chanting and I was in my power and I was, and I still kept it going. And I was going in circles and I circled back around and I was like, and I was just like, and I kept going and I said, oh, you're free to go. And I stayed in that power and I was alone. I had maybe two or three people that were um, assisting me and then it just cut off at some point, you know, because I still had to do this within myself. And when I, uh, I said to spirit, I said, I said to God, I said, what is this? Can you please explain to me what was that banging and all these things that are happening? And every time I saw a vehicle, I could see these, these red eyes, like, uh, like a demonic thing. And, and I'd be looking at something and I, and I, and I, I felt fear and I would look at people. And even though like I, I, I see the physical person, but their faces look distorted to me. So this is how the, the layers peel back. So if you're going through that beginning or middle stage of this cycle of you know releasing and understanding that the taboos from your family saying oh the devil is this or the demonic forces or the dark forces or um uh the evil and uh the voodoo and this and this and that and all that lovely stuff this is what you are having to finally finally release finally release see because I, I had to go into logic too and I said you know if God is the almighty all-seeing all-knowing there is then why would there be such of a force in itself that can be so low and evil and dark and disgusting and you know, all the things that happen to children, all these, all the different things, everything that has been in this darkest places that has ever been. And all I heard was still God. And I was like, what? Are you kidding me? I said, that's very controversial. And I heard Spirit say, because we are controversial. I am controversial. I want to know myself and I'm going to go so far into the darkest part of myself on this spectrum. And it goes I mean, how many of you have seen and heard or witnessed the worst that you've ever seen? And then, then here comes something else worse than that and something else worse. And then you've also seen the greatest and the best and the expansion of things as far and as wide as it could ever go. How the heart and the feelings and the thoughts and the expression just expands and expands. And then even when you think that, you gain all this knowledge and then and, and then the wisdom flows through that knowledge and then you go through another experience and you say but i went through this experience already but it came back again not because you were um being punished but this is the experience of something that you were in joy with and then it came again and then you said oh wow i see something more with it and then what happens is you expand it some more but how you expand it some more is that we went deep like persephone did she had to go deep underground she had to go deep into the forest depths. And even when you think you go as far as you can go, there's still further to go and further to go and further to go and further to go and further to go. And then you come back up again and then you go sideways with it and then you expand and you're like, wow, this is really wide. Then it takes you higher. And so each time the expression of the divine showed up, I had to uh, understand myself again with this. And so when daylight broke out, which that was very rare because I would usually be sleeping during the, you know, as daylight breaks out. But the interesting thing was that nighttime was now breaking into dawn. And as the nighttime broke into dawn, I heard Spirit say, look at the, look at the ground, look at the floor. I looked at the floor and I was like, I never saw this on the floor before. It was all this dirt and dust in the corner and all this mess all over the place. And, and I didn't see it when it was nighttime, when it was pure nighttime. See, and so when I saw it, I took the broom because you know, I'm very funny about being clean and stuff like that and dust. I'm very funny about that. And I started to clean. And so, so I heard Spirit say, well, what did you get from this? And I was like, you know, um, I realized I didn't see it. It was dark. And now I was able to see it because the light started to shine onto it. And I was like, wow, what an amazing revelation. And ever since that day when that happened, I was no longer in fear 
and I understood what the banging, all that stuff was going on day after day, and it stopped. It stopped. And I chose to understand my fears. I chose to understand where it came from through my uh, genetic line, my genealogy, my family on both sides and all the things I used to hear growing up, all the past life memories and everything and remembering myself in my own power, you see? And that's where I chose to be. And then I remember when, <coughs> excuse me, when spirit took me to another level of understanding the light and the dark was when I went to Boston Market one day and I would see all these, you know, when you see all the synchronizations all over the place, everywhere you go. And I, you know, you come out and you see, and you're like, yay, oh my God, a sign from spirit, yay, you know. And so what I did is I said, I always take out my phone and I take a picture of it. But when I took the picture of it, it came out too dark. It came out too dark. And and even though I had the, the, the beams, you know, the light beams on with the car, with the car so I said, I said, I saw her spirit say, why do you think the picture is not coming out? But I said, but I have the light on it. So why isn't, you know, the picture coming out where I can see the words. And so I heard the voice say, turn off the light. And when I turn off the light, the picture came out perfect. So I heard Helen Keller came right straight in. She said, Sharon, we're going to have a talk. And she started talking to me. She says, I was in the dark. She couldn't see. She couldn't hear, but she was able to feel and she tapped into her senses. Now she was rebelling during the process, of course. So sometimes we can't see things even in the light. Sometimes we'll see things through the dark. And I said, what a profound message. And so I ended up getting all these downloads, channel messages, which is all in the book. It's all in the book. This, this book is just like, when I think about everything, how spirit guided me into everything that was led. And when I say spirit now, I'm talking about all the souls who agreed to assist me with the messages. Helen Keller, Bob Marley, James Brown, Prince, David Bowie. The list goes on and on. Maya Angelou. Every time they transition, boom, they come straight to me with messages. And, and, and the ones who came the most was Michael Jackson, Prince, Bob Marley. Ooh, constantly. Messages, messages, messages. And there's some who are in the physical world. Their higher self came to visit with me. And when Helen Keller came to me, I thought that was one of the most profound visits I could ever have. Because that was like groundbreaking revelation to me. She says, I was able to find myself by seeing myself in the dark. Because there's some of us that have our eyesight and hearing and still can't see. You see? So it's not only about what you physically see, it's also what I call sacred listening. Sacred listening and also can you see beyond your physical eyes? Can you hear and feel the message from your heart? Can you feel the dynamic of the, of the messages that are flowing from spirit through you and your beloved, if that's the path that you're on, going beyond the actions that the person takes, but what is the soul communicating through you? What is the message? You see? And so when Helen Keller showed me how she found herself through the dark, you all know she wrote a book and she uh, came into her centeredness and she was able to bring peace back into her life and to her heart because she chose to finally surrender and to understand herself, to forgive herself. She was an incarnated soul that chose that path to come in as a blind, hard of hearing female. And she came through and found herself through love because her teacher had enough patience to love her unconditionally and to help her to get through her dark period. You see, what a beautiful message. You know, it's like, even as I remember it, it's not even compared to when you hear it in the book because it, 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 it was just so moving and profound that I even had started to cry 
when she came in because it was so unexpected you know and this is where the heart just takes over and it it just moves you you know when they say your heart moves you and each time that we allow our heart to move us through the pain because a lot of times we don't realize how we block things um it could be unintentionally and and we block things because we may see something that's frightening or hear something that's scary and frightening and then we just create that block and then these blockages creates the heart disease the the heart palpitations the heart attacks the you know um you know being in that unknown space and so how much can you now trust spirit and trust your inner knowing the unknown all of that stuff even if you don't hear from someone even if you don't see someone even if they're on the other side even if they're on the other side of the world even if they're not in the physical body can you trust spirit can you trust the unknown of spirit can you trust the physical known of spirit that the eyes go beyond what it sees even if you close your eyes can you visualize can you hear can you hear me not from just my voice can you hear me from my heart where I'm coming from you know huge difference when you can hear from your heart more than your ears and your eyes what a beautiful song it is such a beautiful love story when you hear and feel that space and purity of unconditional love knowing that you deserve it and that you are receiving it from the divine through the divine through someone else that you're able to see it even if someone else doesn't you know like you look and you see the baby and the baby is bawling because they want to feel that love and i remember several times greetings kelly several times in the book um i talk about you know my daughter charlie she was a miracle baby the way she was conceived oh man wait till you hear about that how she was conceived okay she was conceived through the holy spirit <laughs> it did take sperm but it was through holy spirit type of stuff that was going on and she was born premature and I had the dream that I was going to have a premature. I have, remember I told you, I have a lot of dreams, a lot of dreams that are prophetic dreams that it pertains to the collective and to my personal life that still relates to the collective. So you met, I have five children. Damon is the third child. When I was pregnant with Damon in 1997, I dreamt that I had a premature baby girl and that premature baby girl did not come until six years later, even after having Brandon. Okay. And when she was born she was born premature just like what i dreamt i had wrote it in the book that i had a i was eight months pregnant gestational and gave birth to a baby girl she's the only girl that i have i always wanted a little girl when i had my oldest son jamar and i wanted a little girl wasn't a girl had I had david no girl when i had damon no girl my mom called me from the house so what did you have a boy she's like another boy when i had brandon i wasn't expecting you know and i always joke around and said you know brandon would not have came in if I had Charlie's probably would have ended right there and I um, and I said okay so it's not because I had Charlie's because I said Ooh, I'm just gonna go right for it now this was like a miracle it was meant to be when she was coming her soul communicated with me and said it's time mommy and and I still couldn't believe it and so when I was in I had to go to the hospital and nurse her through the breast milk and she was the first baby that I was not able to nurse her from her nurturing on my breast. So I had to pump milk and I hated that because that was just going to take up more time. But I focused on the fact that the breast milk was what was going to save her. And she was only four pounds, 14 ounces. That's right. That five feet, eight and a half inch girl was four pounds, 14 ounces. It's about to cut off, but I'm going to come back on again. And... All I could think about was all those babies in there. They were all girls, premature, premature. Okay. And I'm going to tell you the miracle of what it means to be in that space of unconditional love, unconditional love.
just love this, these, this, this music, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some Al Green. Happiness. Do you know that song? Do you remember love it? Happiness. Woo! Something that can make you do wrong. Mm, mm, mm. Right. See, it can make you do both sides. You know, love and happiness can make you do, do two different sides of the spectrum. And that's where you find peace. Because you know that's on two different sides of the spectrum. You can't look one way and don't look the other way. See? But now we get to choose. The integration of this. Sometimes I wonder what bad words I use back there. Did I say the fuckery? You burn the clothes, <laughs> and then I jumped off the bridge. <laughs> I said, Nobody's not gonna chop off my head, and nobody gonna chop off my hand, and nobody gonna chop off my foot. <laughs> I know I'd probably go past the age of 28, 29 in most lifetimes. That's right, that's right. I said what I had to say, and I kept it rolling. Do you think they used middle fingers back then? Or do you think they did this? Or you think they did this? Or did they do this? Or did they do this? Or did they do this? The onk. Mm -hmm. And then we started doing this, right? And every movement we made with the body, some fear came with it because of misunderstanding, huh? Can you imagine that shit? Humans. You know, you make a gesture. Oh shit, he's trying to hurt me. He's trying to do some shit to me. Motherfucker. <laughs> the kids and I do that sometimes. I do like, 
you know, like you, you, like you think you want to scare them, you know, and you think you're so scared, but you know, I'm scared, I'm scared. What is there to be afraid of, right? Did I make you laugh? Great. Got to laugh. Got to lighten up the energy and, you know, this is who I am all the time, you know, that's right. I will have you laughing your ass off. And if we all get together in the physical, I will tell you to bring the depends. I don't care what age you are, cause you will piss in your pants. You will piss. I, I did a, a session with a young lady yesterday. And so, you know, cause I, I was picking up on the energy and spirit. And so as I was reading for her, I could feel she wanted to cough. So she, so I said, go ahead and cough. Come you want to cough too. So I coughed and she coughed. <laughs> and she's like, and I say, so I started laughing because I was like, why can't we just cough and be free to cough and shit, you know? <laughs> so if you're holding your farts and your cough, let it out, okay? So let's not create another fear that's so unnecessary, okay? But of course, take precaution, be safe. But also, more importantly, is be aware of where you are in your thought process with everything, okay? So that means now, before, you know, they say if a, you make a move like this, everybody jump. Now, shit, all you do is a <coughs> and everybody jump. <laughs> so, you know, and, 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 and everything that we perceive and then create another element, another energy uh, with that fear. So in, in so we're not, we're not gonna recreate all that stuff. You know, I, I'm praying and thankful with that, okay? Uh, because you know as one person start to be afraid of it and that's why I am So glad that there's more memes and jokes with it more than and it's not that we don't take it seriously But again as we keep moving through these elements and knowing what the purpose of what's happening And we lighten up ourselves with it. We're not going to create the reality of these fears again. Okay, so How interesting is that so? I'm going to get back to what I was saying about Charlize when she was a baby and um, I had to go to the hospital to bring the breast milk for her. I was determined as heck to give, get her that breast milk because I knew in my heart that if she had died, I probably would have really died. I would have, I feel like I would have been in deep depression and there were a lot of other girl babies that were in incubators because she also had jaundice. And all those babies that were in the incubators were mostly girls. There were any, no boys in there that were premature. So the dream came true. She actually, and, and you know what, on a, on a, on a side note, I didn't want her to be a Libra baby because she was scheduled to be born in October. And I was like, nah, I don't want no Libra baby. So she came in Virgo and look what I got, boy, boy, she can bitch about some things, but I love her to, to life. So anyway, um, and I couldn't believe she was a girl because I kept looking at her vagina and the pampers like, she, this is really a girl? After seeing all these penises? Oh my God. Like, I, it, could, it took me a long, long time. So, but then what happened is there was one particular baby that was in an incubator, but how she was covered, there was this dark um, plastic thing covering the incubator. So it wasn't like the baby's in the incubator and you could see the baby in the incubator. This is where this incubator with the baby was covered also with a dark covering. And when I saw that, I felt so sad. I felt sad within myself and I felt sad for the baby. So I said to the nurse, I was like, you know, why is the why is that baby's incubator covered with the with the dark? And they told me that they had the baby had to have that extra thing because the jaundice was really, really bad. And I felt in my heart that there wasn't anyone visiting the baby. And I said to, to them, I said, well, has anyone come around to see the baby? Because I felt like as if something could have changed with the baby, but apparently not. Um, so they just, whatever, fed the baby with a bottle and, and then the baby was covered back up, you know, in that darkness. And so I went over there and I spoke to the baby, you know, because I truly connect with babies, animals, pets, you name it. And, um, and all I could remember hearing is that when a baby is born, within 48 hours, if that baby is not touched, held, felt, spoken to, the baby will die. 48 hours of not having human contact, okay? 
And I think it was a few days later after that, the baby did transition. And I felt so sad. And I said, isn't that how it is in the world that we've, that, that so much people have become so disconnected that we've, they've lost touch with one another and have not connected to one another because they're so programmed into all the daily stuff that we've had to do and all the everyday things that uh, you get wind up. Because even if I see a person working, you know, their brain, their mind is thinking about another thousand other things that are unnecessary, just filled up with junk and fear and worry and doubt and lions and tigers and bears, oh my, and projections and in the past and stuck in the past and grudges and anger and all of those emotions, you know? And, and I said, look at God, look at, look at the universe and what has been created through the sea thing, huh? What a powerful domino effect that is taking place on planet earth. And all the aliens are watching to see what happens next. You know, the ones who are here and the ones who are, you know, wherever they are. And I also had that too. I had visitation from a lot of my galactic family that came into um, the homes and everything. And I wasn't afraid. I was excited. Excited. Did I say what I was excited? No, I was excited as fuck. That's how I am as an Aquarian, you know, because I love that type of excitement. And it's because I know something is happening on a huge cosmic scale. And this is the reset, the reset of what and who we are and understanding ourselves as the light and the dark understanding ourselves the lowest of lows and being able to forgive yourself and to forgive others forgive your trespasses forgive all things and everything that even if you feel you can't you can give it up to source to help you to get through that you know um and being able to release that pain or what that pain may have been, whether it's towards another person or what, you know, if your twin did something or if this person did something or a child did something or, or something was left unsaid or something that was left undone, do it yourself, do it yourself then. So that way you release that energy and you can get to move on, you know, and really think into what is more precious for you right now. What's more precious to release what's been holding back, not only you, but also your bloodline mm -hmm. for the ones who have not been able to recreate life and have not been able to heal their womb space and uh, the grudges are being held down there, the inhibitions, the fears, um, the traumas, the sexual traumas, um, feeling unwanted and feeling unloved, you know, because remember that Everything that you feel that has been deficient, lacking, missing, that you find that within yourself through God, through source, prime source creator, and that fills the void. That fills the void. Um, you know, it's like, it's like thinking of when they say, Alice doesn't live here anymore. This person is, this one is not here anymore, but you know, the, it's always been there all along. But if you're, yeah, greetings, Grace. But if you're not open and that heart is blocked, that cinder block, if it's there, <clears throat> you're not going to be able to receive and recognize it. It's just going to be like, you're just as much of a zombie than you were ever before, you know? And you know, I always know that when it comes to babies and animals, that's one of the best uh, reprieves, one of the best medicine that can open back your heart again. It's always that ch that childlike energy, that childlike frequency. It always opens up back the heart again. Or listening to music, remembering love, remembering being in love. To be able to feel yourself into being in love again means that you're, you're, you, you, you've totally let go and you're not attached to all the baggage and all the things of the past constantly, you know, but at the same time, you're going to have to revisit it. You're going to have to look at it. You're going to have to just really face it head on like a collision. And I told you the story. I saw the stuff on the floor that I didn't see in the dark. 
And I was able to release and let go of that huge fear that not only was within me, but also my, my mother's sisters. And then it let go after a while. It, I, I was the one that had to do it. See, I know that in hindsight, and then certain things that I couldn't see in the light, you know, the, these, 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 this is the case of when they say that, you know, they say, oh, you're so up there. Oh, you're floating. Oh, you're such on this side of the spectrum. And you're not remembering that you're here in the physical body. And all of a sudden the physical body and your soul is going to create a scenario that's going to bring you right back down and say, oh, I got to face this. I got to face myself. I have to face all the sides to myself. And I remember again, another experience I had during my awakening, which I talk about a lot often when I do. And, and this is when I was in my, I call it my hog heaven. And I had no communication with hardly anyone. It was just my kids. I was in another world. And I was just getting downloads, 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 recording, recording, recording. And then all of a sudden I found myself just floating and there were no bills being thy paid, no cell phone bills, nothing at all, no light bill, nothing. I was in my heaven by myself. No one was there with me, but me and the Holy Spirit and all the other parts of my galactic family. And I was just walking around the house and getting all my signs, messages, and I was recording. I felt like I was floating on stilts and my, 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 my spirit was above in the ceiling of the house. And that house had high ceilings and that lasted for two weeks straight, two weeks straight. And I actually felt my body descending, 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 and descending. And I started to feel sad. And I was like, wow, that's what it feels like with people who have near death experiences. You get to experience true love and blissfulness outside of the body. And you get to observe yourself and you get to feel everyone around you in how they're feeling you know, and you see your body. So that's what was happening to me, except I didn't physically die. And I knew, and I felt in my heart, I knew this is what the new world would be like. And then, and then what you feel, and some of you might've experienced something similar or same to that. And I felt, and I was like, oh my God, I got to tell somebody. I have to share this. This, what a wonderful feeling. And what happened? Nobody gave a fuck because it was my experience with the divine. It was my time to recollect. It was my time to find myself. It was my time to work through the process of letting go and uh, being feeling rejected and feeling dismayed and in awe at the same time. All the surprises and all the elements of surprises that I was receiving from spirit, uh, you know, with the phone typing by itself and all these different things it was just awesome out of this world. And I'm like, how can, how can, um, how can no one else get excited over this? I didn't care about the outside world. I didn't care about eating. I didn't care about, and guess what? All the bills, the, 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 the telephone company, they didn't call me or nothing. The bill, the, the middle bill, the phone stayed on for that three, four months without being paid and nothing kind of, because I wasn't focused on that. And all I knew was that the new earth, um, represents freedom, freedom while I'm still in this body. So I know the body's still going to be changing and changing and changing, you know, into that crystalline structure. And it's like, I knew that I had to keep reconciling where I am in thoughts and feelings, but I had to work through remembering that I'm still in the body and why I incarnated what I chose to ground on earth. So I know that some of you have, have had many encounters with many souls that have felt so alienated. Um, and they're in the upper realms and they had a hard time grounding on earth and wanting to leave, wanting to leave out of their body completely. I get it, but I know that eventually it does become, uh, how do I say, uh, comfortable, like being comfortable again in yourself, being comfortable in your body. Like how when the babies, you know, they say from the time that the baby's born up until the age of seven, the child has 
more memory of being coming from the other side. They remember who they are. They know their, their sort of purpose and stuff like that. And once they get past the age of seven, that's when usually they start to uh, uh, um, acclimate things of the world and, and then the fear stuff and what's programmed with them and, and then all the programming from before. And then after a while it starts to, you know, to float away. But again, your, your, this rebirth is as we're acclimating the parts of ourselves as the child still and the teenager and the adult. And then I feel as you just get to that little part of the early adult stage, and that's where the buck stops there. You don't age when you are in that blissful place. You do not, again, you do not age. That means that someone asks you, how old are you? I am timeless. I'm timeless, okay? So we don't, we don't, we don't have to attain to everything or, 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 or anything that makes you feel aged and old and slow and dense and heavy inside. You see, cause if you don't start from now, then when do you start? You see? So it brings you into a different uh, place, a different type of a euphoric, um, sense within yourself, you know? And then when it comes to twins, it's totally timeless, totally ageless, total blissfulness. So as we're working through again, the, the layers of what the divine master has had to be uh, releasing and letting go of, um, the heaviness that they've carried, the burdens of being told that, you know, especially the ones in the male bodies that they're toiling in the field and they're having to, um, provide and the, the uh, enslavement and, um, the programming and the comp competitive energy and the control and the possessiveness. You, I own you. I got it on paper and you know, this child is mine and this one is mine and we got to divide uh, things with the houses and, uh, you know, all of this stuff and all that stuff is like, it's, it's like looking at a robot and, um, you know, I think of, I, I refer to this like Austin Powers. That's why the spirit always had me watching movies because I make references. And Austin Powers, he was going to be tricked by the fembots that were going to use, you know, their breasts and their sexiness to turn him on. And what did he do? He turned the tables on them fembots. He started to do his own sexual, sensual dance. And as he took off his clothes, they started to explode. That's what the feminine energy does. As you continue to ground the ever encompassing power of the divine goddess, then everything starts to fall and break and explode and this and that and all of that. And that's exactly what this is. So it is through this feminine energy, this love, you know, we love, we love and we love and we understand this love and how unconditional, how pure it is that even if it means that something is going to leave or something is going to shift and something's going to change and something's going to break free and that we know and understand why, you know, this is happening because, um, we got to get rid of the dead wood, the dead weight, the dead leaves, you know, it's like Yeshua, when he uh, went to the tree to get the fruit from the tree, that it, the, 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 it was dead. And he was like, you know what, you, you, you know, you don't belong here anymore. It's time to go. And that's what we're releasing a lot of the dead wood. And that includes souls that say, Hey, I've reached that point and that's it. And they're leaving and it's okay. It's all is well, all is well, because it's creating that free energy that could not exist in certain pockets of the earth and whatever was out of balance, you know, like out of bounds, you know, once that ball goes out of bounds, the game is over. So once something has had to leave, why bring it back? You know, why bring it back? So that's why it's important now more than ever to be aware and conscious of what you speak, where your thoughts are going, you know, because you, you could be easily fall right back into the old way of thinking because you're so used to it. And it's because of how the programs run in the background and they, you know, and they run in the background, be mindful of the posting that you're looking at and 
the messages that come from people because the fear come back in again and the doubt and uh, you know and stuff like that things that relate to twins and the fear and the panic because of what happened during the time of Atlantis and um, an ancient comet again that's what's playing out right now and think of that time when everything was scattering all over the lands and there was loss and deprivation having to escape um, those who who stayed in integrity and um, they stayed in integrity and chose to keep the the line um, in its purest form and in truth and with true love and then there were those who said no I don't want this shit I want to keep my power and I want to have my control and I'm powerful and mighty and I'm gonna go my way and then and this is where the pain um, began because there were some of us that turned away from the pure light turned away from the voice turned away from the pure the, the feeling of that greater love um, and and then that's that was it you see so now what's happened is that the same effect that happened then it's going in reverse so we're in that reverse cycle of feeling the pain knowing where it comes from but then what we're doing is we're shifting uh, through that pain by remembering what the meaning it what it what is the true meaning of it so even if your divine masculine or your divine feminine appears as if it's going against you still hold that space of unconditional love while you're still honoring yourself and self-love and um what else um value how you're valuing yourself keep into keep keep holding on to that reality because no matter what that rubber band effect is that whatever it is that you hold to be true whatever it is that you hold to um, bring you the highest state of joy that however it shows up in your reality it is gonna come back to you just like that rubber band that snaps it right back into place and brings it back into that center place and brings it back to that void where it began you see where it began and as it does that this is where you um you bring it back to that zero point and it be and it feels um how do i say it uh you feel at peace you feel at peace, you know? And each time, what I'm being guided to say, if you feel any part of your body responding to something that either you hear it or you see it, send it love. So if you feel your legs start to say, I love you. I know that, you know, we've run many places and we've experienced so many different, you know, lifetimes of this and that. But you know what? The time is up. And I love you for where you have taken me. Because you know, legs, feet represents um, uh, movement. It represents um, moving forward and how you take things into action. If you have eye infections, what is it that you're not wanting to see? And uh, it affects your eyes and creates an infection, okay? Um, if there's anything that you feel uh, like your throat is uh, bothering you what part of you uh, is afraid to speak okay so every single part of your body every organ represents something in consciousness something in consciousness that came back into this world this reality that is for you to pay attention to okay and sometimes it just sneaks right in and you don't even realize it and the triggers come in and um and then you still walk with it and then it just compounds on top of you know other things so this is how you move through the element of i feel this this i'm experiencing this but i'm able to move to the next level with it and it's almost like you're ignoring it because you know that it's passing through you and that it doesn't stay with you because you're not putting it out there that oh I am this with this and I am this with that because as you say I am it's like you're allowing yourself to embody that experience in your body in the organs of that specific area or whatever that pain is or whatever that trigger is and then it just manifests and stays right there so how you move through the cycle of because what ha what happened is what spirit has been showing me is that because this morning I woke up nauseous again I was feeling nauseated and I felt like some things are still processing through my intestine. 
And I felt like I was poisoned in that lifetime many times and it affected my stomach area. And I felt like I'm processing through all of that energy and it's shared between myself and my uh, beloved. And um, <clears throat> no matter what I've taken, and then I felt um, even like itching in my ears and all these different things was, it has been affecting my body. And I just keep saying to myself, I know that I'm just, I'm pushing through it. I know I'm getting through it. I know that I'm recreating myself and I'm recreating whatever has been held in consciousness in my body from other lifetimes. And I'm now choosing to see things differently. So it's always good to um, speak it out, speak out into existence what you know to be true for you and that as you are recreating what you know to be true to you for for you that you're embodying it because you're placing it into another frequency and another timeline and another space of i am okay because as we move in these cycles Remember, it's so easy to get attached back to the negative thought pattern, the old behaviors of how relationships should be, um, how you feel affected by someone, what triggers, how you respond. Um, and uh, it's like you're testing yourself and the traditions of maybe friends and um, trusting and um, if someone is being authentic with you or not. You know, are you going to compromise the authenticity of yourself? Because if you don't have any friends anymore, so you want to have a friend and you go back to that old friendship or that old lover or reconnect to, to that energy. And then you, it's like, you stay right back in that same space again. So all these realities are going to keep playing out over and over again, over and over again, until the point where you're not even doing anything anymore. It just doesn't even come back again. You know, it doesn't come back again because you know, as the dark parts of self leaves and it leaves and it leaves. And remember each timeline that we've had with all the retrogrades and, um, things that have come at a standstill or whatever has repeated itself. Um, it comes back because there's another layer that you probably did not let go of and you probably knew and you still went back to the same thing again. And then it came back again. So now, I know there are many of us on here that says that's it. That's the final uh, stage left, stage right, wherever you know you want to take it. And you're, it's like you you amplify that unconscious part of yourself that has replayed, like turning on that station. It's just playing the same music over and over and over again. And, and, and once you reach that final stage of that's it, fuck it, I've had enough. No, because it's like a, a, a stronger dishonoring of self. And you know that you have cut it, like finally cut it and see it for what it is. You can feel the difference in how you're recreating your reality and that new energy. And like I said, once you reach to that place, it feels like a fresh new start, a fresh new beginning, because that's why the sun in Aries represents the self. As I see, it's 1221 on the clock. That's the mirror number, 12 and 21. And it's like that part of you is finally re-identifying itself, yourself, while you know all the little other things is floating around or what's in your reality from other people and their thoughts and their fears but it no longer affects you on any level, especially emotionally. Remember we've been mastering uh, even greater as far as our emotional integrity, uh, our emotional body, while the North Node has been in Cancer, how we're recreating, how we represent love for our families, love for your families and children and husbands and lovers does not mean sacrifice does not mean that you disempower yourself, does not mean that you go overboard and you have this undying love uh, so much that you lose yourself uh, in the midst of the crowd and all the identities and the identifications that we have as we interrelate with one another, you see? So even if your family has certain principles and certain 
uh, things that they think and feel and they're still processing through it, you do not have to identify with it. That even if you stand alone out of that crowd or if you're married to someone or with someone or have been, and even if you have thoughts on them or feelings that you're still carrying from that relationship, you can give yourself permission to detach from it and realize again what it has served for you and where it has placed you now when it comes to your emotions and feelings. If you felt that you have not expressed yourself yet or enough, then do that. Do that, you know, because that person or that event or whatever's happened before is getting you to that place of finally releasing it. So you come into that space of your own emotional freedom, your interpersonal integrity. Um, and when I say interpersonal integrity, meaning that you know that you, you know how you identify yourself. Nobody knows you more than yourself. Why have somebody come and tell you who you're supposed to be just because you're in a specific bloodline or family lineage or just because if you were married to someone, oh, till death do you part, this is, you belong to that person, you belong to this, and it's a contract. Because that's all it is, it's just, it's a contract. And yeah, that's a man-made contract. It's a construct that was put into place for um, females to say they're supposed to have a specific role and a specific duty and then the, the man is supposed to be this and supposed to be that and it's all those things that we're breaking apart that started from through Constantine and where in Europe okay all those things the control the Catholicism control I'm gonna make money off of you I'm gonna be in control and so as we're releasing the layers that have been built through all of our cultures and countries and society and all those structures. And like I said, it can sneak right in into your reality because you don't even realize, oh, I, I got to get this done. How, how much from the, from the past two weeks, how much have you been able to be still now? Or are you still working through that? Are you still feeling that, um, you know, you, you got to do the same patterns that you have before? Um, or are you doing something different? Like, you know, this week, this week, tomorrow, think of something that you can do that you've never done before. May not necessarily mean that you go outside or if you do go for a walk or, you know, if you never had an opportunity to do that, if you hadn't had an opportunity to take a nice long bath, if you had an opportunity to do yoga exercise, to dance, to sing, karaoke, you know, um, if you had an opportunity to um, do a live, um, to do writing, hmm? a blog, um, play board games, you know, play the color thing, I forgot what that thing is called, you know, anything that you can think of that you probably have never had the chance to do it or you tried to start doing it, but um, it came to a halt <laughs> because something else came in that was distracting. You know what I mean? How, how often have you been able to let go of social media, you know, the phone, the TV, whatever, you know, and see, see an experiment. I did that for, for myself one time. I, um, I turned off the phone for three days and for the first few hours, it was a little bit difficult, but I did it for three days and I had messages coming in galore, but in a different way, because, you know, messages are going to come through no matter what you could be in a crowd, you could be anywhere they can come in, but it was just a different way of how, um, you create that space for you. And it's almost like you're clearing out toxins and toxic energy that you sometimes don't even realize how much you attach, um, to it. If you've been around someone for, you know, a long time in your house, could be kids, <laughs> it could be, you know, um, a relative, a sister, a cousin, an aunt, a nephew, whatever, and see if you can go in your car, go somewhere for a couple hours and just sit in your own, uh, that's what I call your own sanctuary. That's what I call a true moment of your own divine sanctuary, your own time of uh, being with yourself and go deeper into what do you have attached to all of the relationships that you have? It could be a business partner. It could be, you know, your twin. It could be a friend. It could be, you know, like how are you reevaluating now all the friendships that you've had and the purpose that they've served in your life? If there's any one of them to forgive and let go or, or, you know, whatever. And, uh, and you move on 
and you move on and who has been there for you authentically and, and, and who's showing up now in your reality during this, uh, time of the sea that is showing their true colors and who they really are for you, whether they're on one side of the spectrum where they're there for you or the other side of the spectrum where they're not being authentic and they're fake and they pretend it as if they care for you. But now that you're in a position where you may not have anything or you're not in a, a certain classification, you know, and all of a sudden you don't hear from them or they don't call you. I'm telling you, people are amazing. They show themselves even greater when something is happening that's affecting, you know, or they're afraid they, they don't want to contact you because that means that they're afraid that you're going to ask them for help, you know, so they stay away and you know, pay attention to all of that because that is also helping you to understand yourself and what comes into your reality. That's authentic friends who check up on you, you know, and you know, a, a, you know, like feel into it too, because there's also a side of the spectrum where, um, there are those who have to separate from you where you don't hear from them because they're dealing with their, their darkness and dealing with their shadow and dealing with their pain. And you might have thoughts on them and, and, and send love their way, but still send the love back to you too. Get, give whatever you are giving out to also for yourself. I mean, to others that you make sure that you give it to yourself, you see, and this is how we're bringing in more of, or I would say we're coming into that, um, I, I can sort of say how you're templating even more of that reality in how we are and have been releasing the emotional pain that we have had attached to others and told how it is supposed to be and releasing all that manipulating energy and how people have tried to control each other and that the mind games and the mind control that came through from, uh, that patriarchal system that is not too happy. That's tough titties, you know? Yeah. Because you see the acknowledgement of mother feminine, um, being conscious, being more conscious. Now walking around like the fucking zombies and you know, like you're in zombie land and you can't see and feel, you know, cause I, I have to say it like that because sometimes I shake my head. Like, can't you feel and tell? And that's because of that programming. That's so much in place that all for, like, you know, all, just, it's all about me. It's all about myself only, you know, it doesn't matter if I have to step on somebody's toes. I got to grab up all the toilet paper. I got to get all of the, the paper towels. You know, and there's no thought about what about someone else and what, what, what's the, what's the reason for all that? Why can't we just have gone shopping regularly? Like we always do and be in alignment that everything and all things come together for the greatest good. And that there's enough of everything to go around. There's enough love. There's enough, um, friendships not to be jealous over another person that if you find someone who is in love, that you can also attract love to you. You don't have to be jealous of someone else's relationship and their connection. So it's all of that, that, you know, baggage and things that is also eradicating, you know, or that even if there's someone that you don't know, and there's a stranger that you can talk to them, you can say hi, you can give someone a hug, you know, you can help someone. You don't have to know them, feel into that space of how you show up as love and that that person that you are assisting is you, you know, that you put yourself in someone else's shoes as well as your own, you know, and that we work together to bring in this new community, this new thought, this new frequency of unity, oneness and love and not all that division, you know, and panic and fear and all of that stuff. So it just makes a, a difference. It makes a difference. Time for a music break. Oh, that's right. Ain't no stopping us now. Ain't no stopping us now. Let's go. 
That's right. And this is where the master comes in and says, I agree. again you know because all of the structures I'm gonna keep it real all the structures and all the elements that existed from that time of all the things that have been created to keep us distracted from the divine and distracted from being in love and focused on all the stress and the worries and all that motherfucking shit and not remembering that Making love and connecting through the heart is what creates, brings you the, that magnifying joy. You see, it, it creates new worlds. You are provided for that magnanimous energy allows all the animals to roam the earth among us. And there is no fear of anything. They're not afraid of us. We're not afraid of them. You see, there's nothing that destroys us. Nothing is destroyed. Everything is flourishing. Everything is in abundance. You're healthy. You're wealthy. You see? And because they knew, when I say they, <laughs> the energies of those who chose to separate from the divine, to separate from their divine feminine, to separate from the feminine principle, then what happened is everything started to get dark. Everything started to descend in consciousness and things started to be destroyed, you know? And through the parts of the self that became destroyed, the disintegrated, um, it had to get to know itself um, in understanding the physical presence of love because we knew what it, what is, what it was but we wanted to understand it. And what better way to understand it than to go through the experiences, you know, because whenever I talk about anything, I don't want to make it seem one-sided that we get into anger and um, disappointment and resentment in the past only with what was created through the patriarchal system, but to understand why that system in places, how we get to expand in consciousness, how we get to understand ourselves, how we get to remember ourselves, how we get to glorify the divine because the divine is in delight of itself through each and every one of us as the microcosmic element of the self, you see? And so that nature, the divine nature of sexual energy and sexual love is what we're returning to, but first, 
thy must heal thyself and to heal thyself into every single part of the chakras, everything that connects you to this love in that system itself of who you are and how you are creating that third energy. You see, that third energy and that magic. See that magic because it's almost like it's almost like being offline on something. It's sitting there dormant and it has to uh, come back into its realignment. See, and how it comes back into its realignment is that it has to work through those blocks. See, so if you are still tied to religion. If you're still tied to lack and limitation consciousness, if you're still tied to, um, uh, you don't believe in love, you don't believe in experiencing love in its grandest form. See any of that type of consciousness. If you feel that, um, all relationships are temporary or that you'll never have this and you'll never experience that and you don't feel it exists or it's not coming around or it's leaving you and it's going away. Um, all of that stuff that's tied again to the past and to your, um, your family lineage because of broken, um, uh, homes, um, uh, that the only way that anything really happens nowadays is that, uh, you know, you have single parenting. You know, there's no relationship that's lasting anymore. So be, be mindful of where you are in thoughts with that because it's such a thin line with what you're letting go of and what you're creating. And I say thin line because if you're holding that energy of anger or, um, you know, like which there are things that is going to bring in the anger, you know, because of how you feel inside because of what you experience, which you are to honor that. And as you are feeling that, that feeling, that emotional feeling or disappointment, or it could be fear or it could be doubt is the key is to remember to see it also from how love is showing up for you to help you to come back to yourself. And that's what. I will leave you with that on that note because it's about to end again. Yes, it is, sweet souls. I love you. So I'm back again. And I'm coming on just to see if anyone has questions or anything that they would like to ask me. I think it's... um great to I think it's I feel it's great to get um, it's great to get um, thoughts that come from anyone else that may feel hey what do you think about this if you have any questions or anything you heard my soul just bringing out anything at all, anything you haven't heard, you know, they say three is a charm, so, yeah, let me see, this, is this bright enough, wait, let me, let me get this brighter so I can see, yeah, now I can see it. Since it's just you and me, my dear, do you have anything that you feel that you want to ask me or <clears throat> anything you heard me say that maybe I did say, did talk about and maybe expand on it or anything you didn't hear me talk about, 
that I can um, answer that question. It's like spirit tells me this is a time of clarity and truth. Um, no holds bar. Um, like the veil, like even with the divine master, that veil is so thin that we can't stop what is meant to be seen now because it's there's just full disclosure with the truth. Oh, wonderful. You've been, you said what most of what said have been, you've been channeling or chat, it says chant, cut it off. Mm. Yeah. Channeling. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, um, <clears throat> it's like getting rid of how I feel is like getting rid of a disease. You know, it's like a disease of that consciousness of what, what was created and finally, um, uh, healing it through the change of the thought, you know, the thought pattern and it, um, you know, it moves through the body, it moves through the physical body. So that's why it feels like some things are just lingering on, you know, whether it's the headaches and the throat and pain in the body and all that stuff so it's interesting how we're eradicating all the diseases even the mental disorders the mental disorders and um the emotional breakdowns too as well so it's gonna bring it's gonna bring up all these things too in our realities that we're either gonna witness it and see it or we're gonna have it ourselves you know because I know some people, when it comes to their awakening process, um, they go through that that stage, and they don't. Their families may not realize that's what it is, and they think that something is on them or something, um, uh, something demonic is happening. When really, what it is is that the soul is peeling back the layers of all that data and experiences that it has brought the most pain. That's what it is. So. It's, it's kind of like, again, um, what do you call it? Uh, it's like a thin line. It's like really have crossing a thin line because you know what it is, you understand what it is, and it's like getting into a conversation and saying, oh, um, let's, get, let's get you some medication and, and therapy and all that stuff, which... I'm not telling anyone not to get medication or go for therapy, but again, there is a bigger picture to what's happening um, uh, on, an, on an emotional level with all of this. Um, and we're being forced to face the emotional pain that we've carried as baggage for centuries, for centuries. And it's almost like having 100,000 people in line behind us that we've been attached to uh, from uh, incarnations after incarnations after incarnations and that each incarnation that you have then the the ties that you have to those family members they you're carrying that it's like a it's like a, a, a snake ladder Can you imagine that's, that's a lot of souls that's a lot of souls that's a lot of energy and a lot of baggage <clears throat> And that's why I always feel, I always feel that when we are really breaking the chain, like really breaking that chain is coming from that power right here and saying no more, enough, and or if you do something differently than what you have not done before, that breaks the chain. Even if it means that you, you're turning the other way yeah and it is the feeling of starting again it is it really is a feeling of starting again um it, and that's the reset and each time we're having to reset um like in different instances there's this reset and another reset and another reset and it almost seems like does it ever end and i feel too during the time of this reset you're going to find that there are even more people pulling away from you including those who may also be on a twin soul path 
you you know if they were if you were friends before and then all of a sudden you're not really connecting to them so the, the part of the soul that's connected to the oversoul self of the divine has to separate itself from where someone else may be in their consciousness and their thought maybe about their their journey their path or what they're healing through and as you're ascending and where you are knowing and understanding your path or you're releasing something more or whatever where you're taking it it has to go through that separation so it because it's it's almost like when um someone's miserable and you go hang around them being miserable all the time and if it pulls on you um, if it starts to pull on you, it's for you to make that choice to, to separate yourself from that energy. Otherwise, you'll feel like you start to become miserable like them. So when someone is going through their healing process, the reason why we have to go through that separation is because it can kind of taint where you're, where you're heading or where you're at on your journey. And so that's why the oversoul goes through all these cycles of up and down, why you go through pushing and pulling with your twin, because everything that you were doing in terms of the data that you're collecting between yourself and your twin it has to observe itself and and then heal through it or shout through it and <laughs> things that come out so that way it can then come into that greater harmony and peace and it can be quite um uh what's that word crazy type it could be like a crazy way that it shows up you know, uh, when I say crazy, meaning that uh, things can come out of their mouth or your mouth randomly, because that's happened to me too, where things just come out randomly. And you're like, why did I say that? Because that's what was attached to that experience from a previous lifetime. And that's why it's always important to pay attention to. I really feel oh, every day there is an experience that's showing up in your reality that tells you where you are in your own timeline. Okay, whether it's in the new one and then that part of the, the, the self that's leaving the old. I really do. You said, like you said, and this is like I'm doing cleaning and I pull away from. Yeah, but even cleaning up house is even going deeper in cleaning up house. And I don't feel sad, you know, I don't feel sad. I know there were there was times before I would wrestle with it because um, I love connecting and um and i had to work through those emotions of having to separate because it was the best for me but then you know you miss that person and i had to look at it just like as if someone died that you know they're, they're they may be physically here and i know it's not the same comparison but i knew that it had to be for the best of good and i've had even people pull away from me that i didn't even i was like what did i do but i know it's not on me it's on them because obviously there's something that um that is triggering for them that they had to cut off from me. And sometimes I didn't even realize it till long after. And I'm like, and I go back in my mind and I'm like, did I do something? Did I say something? And I'm like, oh, okay. So that's just the way the cookie crumbles, you know? And I know that there's instances where people may come back into the, um, into that, into your life and so forth. And I can tell and feel when I feel some people probably go a little crazy. Yeah, and I feel that the ones who do feel like they go crazy, no judgment, it's because they are still holding on. Holding on. It's like this path is about letting go of everything you think you know. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Everything. Because um, so much has been created by us um and what happens is each experience that i notice that loops and loops into, into you know from one thing to the next um it's there's an attachment with the emotional body so each experience even though you might say oh but that's there's nothing wrong with that that's okay <laughs> maybe not necessarily it might be attached to an emotion a, an emotional block that's connected to between you and your mom or your aunt or uh, you know a father and 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 uh, you know parenting or it could be anything and and that in and of itself may seem normalized when actually uh, it's it's dysfunctional 
Because I feel that some people feel that the dysfunctions that they have with their families or with themselves, it's normal and it's okay. And I feel good about it. But where is it taking you? And are you really in the fullness of joy? And are you in your power? That's the key. And I, I also found too, interestingly with this journey, is that I know that we're each here to be in our own expression and our own freedom. And, and there's sometimes where I feel that some people just stay comfortable in one place and they don't try to go the next level like they just stay you know and then it's like they cause more pain on themselves because they don't choose to expand more within themselves it's almost like a laziness and that's why i feel again that the c thing is creating that cataclysmic thing where you gotta wake it up now you got to move a little further than that you see and it's 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 like getting um a, a live wire that just jukes you in the ass and gets you to to move you see and that's how i look at it that's how i look at it um because just because if you feel you know hey i i feel comfortable where i'm at and i don't need to go any further and you don't take away my sovereignty <laughs> okay um and then and then i'll say oh so how do you feel about this blah 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 and, and, and I said, because I can feel when you're not in your fullness of joy. See? So it's like, it's not where um, we're going to have to keep going through all this duality stuff for the next, you know, 10, 20 years. It's, it's at that point, that mid center, that thousand year or 20,000 year reign, whatever that time is, because they showed me this is the mark. This is the marking point now. This is that pinnacle point, you see, um, where you, you, you're facing your shadow head on and it's gonna feel like you're facing goblins and, and all the, 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 that uh, demonic energy that one would talk about, which actually it derives from what are you demonstrating of yourself, you know? How are you demonstrating yourself? How are you um, showing yourself in something that you wanted to see in experience from what you know so therefore you're demonstrating it okay in a delightful charismatic the theatrical type of way you know and that's really what it comes down to and so while you're in the, the midst of that now are you going to start pushing forward now and um and pay attention and not uh, you know, stay stuck. Like really, really, really stay stuck. You know, and I know that it's a, there's there's a lot of um, a feeling again of um, also uh, I can't do this by myself. I, I got to do this with someone. I gotta, you know, it, it's too difficult. I, I'm not used to this. So there are some people who are having to um, uh, get used to doing things by themselves. Meaning they got to heal themselves. They got to rewind the old parts of themselves they didn't want to look at and uh and really get uncomfortable because i always say that when you are able to go into that uncomfortable place where you really feel uncomfortable and it really doesn't feel secure whoo you know how much you're taking it to that greater level of self and um and, it, and it's based on the attachment of needing validation or permission from someone else and acceptance from someone else you know because it just goes so deep and deep and deep you know um, just because of um, all of the um, trauma the trauma and the wounds that have been stuck to that cellular memory not only in the emotional body but the physical body the physical body carries a lot of emotional trauma as well a lot and a lot of times it's there's so much masking with it the mask goes on you know and and then there's some who are not comfortable with having to take off the mask but see the divine gives you but so much chances to take off that mask and if you don't take off the mask it's going to be taken off for you and therefore that's why the veil is so thin and the divine master is having is is feeling what they didn't want to feel so i feel that they're at a stage where they are feeling everything now too that's how they're connecting to the feminine energy they're feeling 
and trying to hide still with the feelings, but it, it can't stop and it's moving faster and faster like a freight train. You see, that's, that's how it feels like a freight train. Yep. And, um, it, 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 it and it's like, um, there's no handbook to how do I do this? Where do I find? And this is where I feel spirit is, um, moving them in the direction of, I have no other choice but to surrender to the divine and to surrender to my uh, feminine divine love and to that feminine energy, you know, and, and it really feels like an earthquake of the heart. It's like an earthquake of the heart. The heart is um, shattering and breaking so that way um, if they have to cry, they're, they're going to cry. I haven't had to, I haven't really cried in a very long time, I would say, with my journey, but I have felt my divine masculine crying, like, you know, because even if you try to hold it in, it, it just must expel itself. It must, we must feel, we're going to feel, something's going to bring us to, um, to break down, you know? And, and the and spirit just keeps showing me that there's mental and emotional breakdowns that are happening with all of this. And um, this is the time of more of the masculine energy breaking down anyway, which that has not been used to because the lightheartedness that comes with the new earth, it's not, it's not even at the level, it includes, but it's not only at the level of childlike. It's at the level of like, watching a musical play where they're not talking they're singing to each other like a lullaby they're singing to each other like a lullaby you see and not labeled and said that that doesn't make you a man or that doesn't make you a, a female or woman you know and that she's so free she's free to be herself and uh, she understands her body and the power that comes with her body and it's not hiding either and that he is the protector of his divine feminine and all the divine feminine is protected by the divine master no matter where she goes you know that we, we we're, we're just able to be safe with one another that even if I feel like I want to hang outside and get the Sun rays on my breast I don't have to feel violated just because I'm, you know, in my breast, <laughs> you know? It's just so many levels to all of this. And we may say the world is not ready for that, that type of radicalism, but that's what's coming, you know? And that even if the Divine Master feels that he or she wants to be in her freedom of song and praise that he or she is, and that it's not looked as uh, being a sissy or weak, you know, and that, you know, we're able, you know, that ability to be able to be open with one another and, and that, you know, being, being open and, um, not having to feel like you have to be in control of something. And I feel that's one of the biggest things that's happening throughout this weekend, this time, this energy and Saturn and Aquarius is just really just that final pull pulling the plug on the control you know because it's no coincidence that as of so, so, you know Sunday now where I'm at <coughs> excuse me but as of 8 p.m. all stores locked down you know except restaurants and the, it's, it's literally like ghost town you know it's really literally like ghost town I mean look at that there's no male sports now the barber shops don't don't come we're cutting in here <laughs> you know everything taken away all of it all of it taken away so that way there's nothing else left to be distracted nothing else left to be distracted you see so it's a it's an amazing um thing to see how again that surprise element of the sea thing that broke it up that's breaking it up and 
we're going to be experiencing what it's like to come together from this breakup. See? And <clears throat> it's imperative for the divine feminine, or if you carry more divine feminine energy, to keep um, a, a, in that awareness of how open are you to receiving. Because just like what I when I played the song earlier, if you're still closed off, if you're still closed off in your heart, if it's still heavy for you to receive love or feel you deserve love, then work through that. If it connect, if it's if it comes from your uh, childhood connecting to your father, or any male figure, or any masculine energy that has made you feel unwanted or feeling unprotected, like you like you know you weren't stood up for, you know if you were dishonored or disrespected or sexually abused. If you felt like you didn't have a voice to be heard as a child growing up or a teenager, you weren't able to be your full self, you weren't able to feel secure. Um, if you felt vulnerable, um, all of that is how you can rethink into, uh, you know, because sometimes we go through, you know, day by day. And, you know, remember, we, it, there has been so much walking around with mask on and, uh, and not really being able to express how, you know, we feel about each other, you know? Even when I think about when I, when I came home this evening and I was talking about with my kids and we were all expressing to one another which one of us we feel the most quiet and, and, and uh, the quietest in the house, depending on when it's all four of us together alone or which one, how each one interacts with each other is so different. If it's me and Charlize alone, ooh, the house is like at its quietest that it could be. And then she says, she complains that I'm always listening to the whatever um, YouTube or whatever. And why do you have to have it blasting, you know, whatever. And she's always in her room and she's ready when she comes in and, and, and starts to um, troll me. And then if, 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 if David and Brandon are alone, they're, they're making all this noise and talking and playing music and it's blasting and stuff, stuff. So, but we were all like shouting across to each other, but it wasn't in anger. It was just how we were relating to each other. And we were still in laughter in that connection that we have with one another. So I can look at it from so many spectrums here, like from mother to children. Uh, me in my uh, fe feminine form and Charlie's in her feminine form and then relating it to my sons that are in masculine form, masculine energy. One aspect of my son in masculine energy is um, not as um, nurturing as the other. And then the other one is more like he hardly gets mad. He hardly gets angry. He doesn't get as emotional, but yet still he's more in joy. The other one is, is, is not that much in joy, but not that he doesn't, he's not necessarily never in joy, but this is all the different sides of the spectrum and how we relate. So you think of that as what you are mastering with your divine feminine energy and the divine masculine energy that's showing up in your outer reality and pay attention again to how that energy is responding to you through the people that you're that you are in you know having um, any type of interrelation in your you know in your outer reality. Um, you'd be surprised even if you think, well, I don't have anybody I'm interacting. It could be on the phone. It could be at work. You know, or, or even if you're not going to a physical place where the workplace is, and um, and it shows how you are definitely master yourself, you know, because even like, again, with my son, the one that's in college, the one that was in college away. And two weeks ago, when he said he was going to be on spring break, and I told him, I said, why don't you bring, I said, I think I need to come so I can get all your stuff because I feel very strongly they're going to say no school for the rest of the semester. No, 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 because I won't be able to study while everybody else is, everybody going to be making noise and stuff. And I said, why don't you listen? I said, I know I can feel that's what's coming because I can feel it. So next thing you know, email comes and says, oh, um, they, they can still stay in the dorms, but, um, you know, it, you know, that they, they can do that. 
and stuff like that because they're not going to be giving any refunds and stuff and so forth, right? And what else happened again? Another email came out again. Oh, well, now they said that they can go and get their stuff and turn in the keys. And he's like, oh, mom, you know, you were right. And I was like, yes, I did say that. Didn't I say that? Then it gets better. Then they went and said, oh, you can't go back and get your stuff. And I said, didn't I fucking tell you that let me come and get all your stuff because I felt it coming. And it kept coming in stages with what was coming, see? So if you are in that energy of how you connect to what you know and what you feel, do not falter. Stay steady, on course with what you know and what you feel because this is how we're guiding back that energy to the divine masculine to hear and to listen to feel follow the intuition and the common sense feel into what feels right see and that they the 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 ears also hear because if you're if you're more in masculine energy, whether you're in the female body, and if you feel that you're not surrendering to that voice, the inner voice, because we've been taught to, to close off that voice, to close off the parts of ourself that don't want to hear, see, what comes next? Because if we're still, this is what spirit is teaching us to be still, be still and hear, quiet the mind at times. Sometimes you gotta go back into the mind, but quieting the mind and allow the heart to speak also. See? And listening to that voice. And at the same time, what's interesting is that when he had to be picked up from school and I said that I um, was gonna come and get his stuff, I wasn't feeling that well. So I started to create in my reality that someone would be able to bring him down. And that's exactly what happened. So of course he tried to pull card and say, but you weren't feeling well anyway. Da, da, da. I said, I may not have been feeling well, but I still would have taken the trip. But I knew that because I love myself so much that I created in consciousness that someone would be able to bring him down. So even if I didn't get to do it, somehow something away would have been made. But um, I'm only sharing that in the sense that how I realized in consciousness how I was loving myself enough to not go and I created for someone else to bring him and at the same time he also had to under understand what listening and connecting to that feminine energy and the voice see and this is how we're recreating um, uh, how we move in divine flow with one another and tele telepathy, you know? So, you know, like my other son now, he's not in as much resistance as Brandon, but he's not operating consciously with things, not as conscious as he, as he should. So I had to, you know, teach him again and, you know, move him into the space of, if you call me and say, can I pick you up? And you know that I'm coming, that means you look at your phone and you look out for my call. So even if you're with someone, you are conscious enough to know and feel if the vibration of me contacting you. So you see, it's all that part of ourselves that we're exercising that, um, like that muscle, okay? Because it hasn't been used that much in these realities because everything has been so robotic and programmed and you gotta look up look it up in the paper and you you it you you uh you need someone else to tell you what to do next you see and this is why it's so imperative to keep connecting to the uh the principle of the feminine energy that had been missing on the earth so much see and so what spirit showed me is that she's in the air she's in all the elements of everything there's nothing left unturned with the energy of mother guy and how she's raised in consciousness you know she had been suppressed and she's been coming up through the earth she's been coming up through the volcanic activity she's been coming up through the waters she's been coming up through the fire the rage kali 
She's been coming up through Yamaya, okay? She's been coming up through Oshun. She's been coming up through Obatala, okay? Chango. Every element. She's been coming and flowing through. Um, oh, I don't remember her name. And it's like she's telling me that it's like every part of ourselves that connects to the principle of the feminine, no matter what name she has been given, is what we're giving rise to. And we, we and even if it was looked as, oh, she's a witch here, and she's a this, or she's a bruja, and she's a tara, la tara, whatever, that, that's still her. It's still her. We still make up her. It's all her. And if you if you're hiding that part of her, it's not to be afraid anymore. To let her out, let her out of the closet. See, because I know that certain names and labels have been attached to um, a negative thought, or it's been attached to being as negative when it was not, um, or it was um, feared. Even I was um, talking to someone how I remember when. One of the things that I had to get over and over again through the course of my awakening um, is <laughs> the things that would pop up in my reality that I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want to look at that. Oh no, what's that? Why am I seeing that? And one of it was sacred prostitution. And when that was popping up in my reality, I, um, I knew I had to face it. I had to look it up and I had to understand it and shift it shifted in my own thought patterns in how I viewed it based on where it was coming from my ancestors you see because the um, the purity and the essence of the feminine had been twisted um, disintegrated and uh, it was uh, how do I call it um, covered up with lies and deception and so everything that was created in that element and that energy of who she is, is what we're unraveling. And as you unravel her and you bring rise to her, this is what is also sealing and cementing that consciousness to remain on earth as it is coming out fully in that empowerment through each and every one of us that's in that feminine energy, especially the females. It's the female embodiment and energy that is creating the reality of what must change. So if you are in the midst of three or four masculines that are right in your face and you hear them saying something, at that moment, say something. Shift it. Shift the pattern. It's not just, oh, let me just, you know, I recognize it, see it, and then that's it. If at that moment it's presenting itself, that is at that moment that you are clearing that reality in that energetic field because you see there's pockets of you know they call them imprints it's just like certain uh, wars that have been on the earth right and certain activities in different corners of the earth the energy and the imprint is there that consciousness is there from those who are either here or those who have left and it hasn't been cleared and that's why it's important to speak it out. As the moment that you hear it and see it, to speak it out. Even if no one is in the room and you hear it on the TV or you hear it on you know, YouTube or something, speak it out and say, I declare and I'm clearing that thought. Because you, you know, the love knows no distance. What we change and what we perceive at the moment that you realize it, it knows no distance. So the distance and the travel that it takes to what you are shifting, it is happening immediately, immediately. And that is what is also creating these new realities, that pocket of change and newness and honor that's given to the divine feminine, you see? Um, and she cannot be tamed. That's what happened before, is that she was forced to be tamed. You know, the horse, the horse doesn't care about being tamed. The horse rides to its freedom always. How many times have they tried to hold the horse down and, and then when the horse is not looking, it just takes his hind legs and just kicks your ass, you know? And and, and this, I, I, I did do um, a video about three years ago and 
I spoke about the freedom of humanity and the title of it was Riding a Horse to Freedom or something like that to that effect. I have it on the playlist that I, I have it on my playlist. And I remembered when I had that dream with my divine masculine where he came in on uh, on a white truck and a brown horse was in the truck and he came in through as uh, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. And that was back in 2010. And at that time I was in the process of purchasing a vehicle. It was a white Honda Pilot, I'll never forget. And so when I went into the dealership and I did get that car and when uh, The Rock came in in the white vehicle on with the brown horse on the truck I um, he came and he said Sharon I love you so much and I just came to be with you so my my twin found me 2014 four years later and he came and he entered into my life because I was at a point where I released a relationship that was not at the height was not the highest and best for me anymore and I told myself I'd rather be by myself in my relationship with myself than to be with anyone that I feel stressed and, and lost 20 pounds, you know, from that person. And so I decided to love myself. And when I did that, I would tell, I tell you, I think it was a few months later after that, that's when Rondi came down. I wasn't looking for any relationship. I wasn't like, Oh, I gotta be with someone. Nope. I was not at that place. See? And that's, and that's how it works. It's like when you really let go, you really let go on a God, that's when it starts to happen. And it was interesting is that he had a white truck he had a white truck and when I first physically met him not through talking on you know seeing him in video because he always video called me he said to me how did I know to pick him and I was like why would he ask that question so that's so interesting for a man to ask me that question and I said man he's so deep and so spiritual I've never had that experience before and I knew there was something so supernatural about this whole experience with him and I told him, I said, well, I had a dream that I, that, you know, this guy, and it was the rock Dwayne Johnson and he is built like the rock. So when I see, you know, Randy tall and big and thing, and I knew that was my sign. So when you ask, when you ask spirit, God source to show me the way, the way will be made shown to you, the signs you will see the signs, whether it comes before or after or during. And the key again is how we're tapping in to that inner voice into that spiritual energy, you know, cause the divine feminine brings that spiritual energy down to earth and divine masculine brings up that physical element of the world, the protector, you know, this is, he's got the whole world in his hands, you know, holding us in place, holding everything in place. And then we're the ones that are bringing out the energy of what we desire. And then it comes into creation in the physical world. And so what a beautiful merge this is, you know, and I'll never forget when a spiritual teacher said to me, she said, Sharon, you're going to be meeting him halfway because you're all the way up here and he's all the way down here. He's seen it from his perspective and I'm seeing it from my perspective. And so now I can, we can say, Hey, this is what I know from my perspective. I see you from where you're at. And this is where the surrender comes in, where it doesn't have to be in control and say, my way is right. But I understand now from your point of view and we're in gratitude for how we're able to see each other from each point of view and perspective, you see? And, and, and it's like that centered peace that comes with it, you see? And, it, and, and, and you're detached from how that person may or may not respond, see? And that's, that's the ultimate freedom. That's the ultimate balance. See, it's like, it's like, it's, it's so much on the spectrum to this walk, you know, and it may seem like you can't do it, but you can, cause there's no limit. 
to the expansion of this consciousness and there's no limit to the dynamic of whether we came in as twin souls to master through this you know where you, you know that's the soul decided to do this split uh, in two different bodies you know you know that that person is you know your soul is in another body somewhere and uh the beauty and the power and how it shows up and the magnificence and that even as i said to him how i knew and then i knew within myself something about him and he knew something about me before i knew what this was and this is how the glory of the divine gets our attention you know and then the divine masculine has to step back and allow her to achieve that full divine glory of who she is see it's so important and it's so important to hold that space of who you are with it where it's not falling apart anymore it's not dishonored anymore and i say it in terms of the energy that's within you that we're all embodying that we're all mastering that we're all perfecting to that place again it's not where you're absolutely perfect, but it's at that place where you're so fully in power and you're so fully in peace and you're so fully in a, a greater aspect and element of joy more than the other side of the spectrum while you're still observing it and seeing it. You're not ignoring it, but you're not taking it in as much where it's affecting you emotionally, you see? And, um, and that's, what your love, that's what the love story is. It's, it's a love story. It really is a love story. Yeah, it is a love story indeed. And it's so awesome to see um, others when as they're uh, opening up to that journey for themselves. And we can look and say, gosh, I was there too. I remember. And so if you do find yourself coming across someone who is also beginning on their journey, just like you did, you know, say, say something if they, if they ask, of course, you know, um, so that way we know that we're not, they're not going off into being trapped in that s spiral or the things that, um, have kept us down for so long, because no matter what, we're still doing this, um, collectively, it's still a collective, um, consciousness that's filtering through all of these traumas and um dissension and um you know that up and down and you know and the waves of all of this but i do know based on everything that i've been feeling for the past several days it's like the calm is starting to filter in a little you know the calm is starting to come in it's like it's almost like when the, the beginning stage of this is it's like shock you know it's just like when you hear a, a death and it's like you're shocked and then it has to work its way to acceptance and then as it, as it works its way to the acceptance of the death what has to die the old world that that's leaving okay that old world that's leaving and as it's leaving there's some of us that still want to attach and say, no, 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 I don't want to let it go because this is what I'm used to, you know, and it's uncomfortable because I have to do something different now and I don't know where to begin. I don't know where to begin because I'm used to someone telling me what to do, how to feel, where to go. And so as the new earth is beginning her embarkment, you know, she's already on her ship. She is moving to the seventh dimension on the ship and I am so delighted. The seventh dimension is where is where she's heading and it's not too far far away because it's already beginning it's like uh the way it has always been described to me it's like taking off those panties and say oh i'm so free i'm so free and i feel lighter i don't feel as heavy so if you find yourself feeling like you want to take off your drawers take off take it off take it off and feel into yourself and say how does this make me feel do i feel lighter do i feel ashamed of myself do i feel like i'm not comfortable to be naked do I feel uncomfortable that someone really knows who I am? Do I feel uncomfortable because someone can see right through me? That someone can hear my thoughts? That someone knows where how I may respond next? You see? That you really can be down to earth and be your authentic self and don't have to feel chastised, judged, and criticized. That even if someone sees some part of you that's naked, can you become and are you comfortable with yourself? Or do you feel like you still have to hide? 
See? So, because Mother Earth is not hiding her feelings, and she's definitely not hiding her thoughts and where she chooses to be now, because that time is up. So, um, love, no matter what, love is what remains. Love is what remains through all this transparency that's uh, unfolding. See? Yes. All of this transparency because I just see all this free energy, free, er free energy, free energy, free energy. Everyone is um, coming back into the, themselves and remembering themselves. You know, I, I was told um, we are all one, but we're not all equal. Not right now. We're all one, but we're not all equals. Not right now. Mm -mm. And wherever and however you take yourself on this journey, you can't keep looking behind to see who else is with you. Because then what happens is if you keep looking behind, you might miss a step, <laughs> you know, miss a mark, miss a message, you know, and just know that you will not be left alone with someone else that is similar or having some similar experiences to you. And you can say, yay, you know, I have my support system, see? And you will then begin embarking on that template of true love with someone that is compounding that love and compounding the energy of who you are. So imagine the greater magnification of a Brenda and a Sharon and whoever else is on here, that greater magnification of you, that you can now say, I am that I am that I am. Yes, powerful statement, powerful statement, yes. So I dedicate this song that I've, I've played this song before to do with how I feel about the Divine Masculine, the, the new Divine Masculine that's empowered and powerful and loving and free and um, is able to just be in his expression and open. Yes. And that we lift lift them up see lift them up no matter how they no matter what category they're in lift them up you see because they chose to embody that old patriarchal system and that wasn't easy it's not and so i put this out there i love my divine master i love you randy i love you Colin. i just love you i love all the divine master that is rising to their true power and who they are Forgiveness and healing. Yes. Power of love. Yes. And we're here to, to help others to remember themselves too. And the power of the integration of the divine master and divine family. The power of that integration, what it means, you know. And how Saturn is bringing in that new energy feeling so alive again see i'm so in love it just brings this this is what bringing yourself back to life is all about you see
longer choose to have dual experiences. I feel what you feel. You feel what I feel. And this is a song that I added to my playlist like a week ago, and I remember it. Um, and I was like, what a beautiful song to think about how the divine feminine allows her heart to be moved and to be open. This is, she opens her heart, he feels it. They connect us one with that movement together, you know. It's never one sided, never. It's together. Yeah.
pieces together, spiritual, mental, emotional, and etheric, and physical. We're here to embody everything together in this lifetime, this awakening time, and that's what I know to be true. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I know this was like a lot of information and um, I just feel like everything I spoke out into this reality and as I feel the presence of love, I feel the presence of the divine is here and showering us with the, um, the information the light uh, that shines and flows through and it's planetary it's interplanetary it's cosmically Saturn is speaking through me um, the Palladian is speaking through me Orion Syrian they're telling me the villages are coming back together and that we each represent um, 